Well, good morning. Let's try it again. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I'm glad to see everybody this morning, and we welcome you to our service here at Crossroads this morning, and we welcome all those who may be watching online. Uh, we're glad that you chose to join us uh, for our service today. We know it's always a choice, and so we're always grateful for those that choose to be a part of our worship service. We do have visitors with us this morning, and we welcome you, and uh, we trust that God's going to bless you today for being in worship with us. Uh, i got a couple things I wanted to point out this morning. First of all, these beautiful roses. These roses were placed in the sanctuary today by Butch Varner, excuse me, Butch Varner, uh, to honor his wife, Betty, on their wedding anniversary. Now, when they first got married, I understand he gave her, for their first anniversary, all he could afford was one rose. So he gave her a rose for their first wedding anniversary. And then the next year, he, he gave her two, and then three. And every year, there's a, no, there's a rose for every year of their, of their marriage. And this year, there are 56 roses in this bouquet. Yeah. And so uh, I don't know where Butch is working security this morning, so maybe he's seen this online. I don't know. He's somewhere watching a camera. Betty's here. But I just wanted to thank Butch and Betty for your example of faithfulness to each other and faithfulness to your church and faithfulness to the Lord. Uh, it is truly an example for all of us to look to, and we thank you for that. Uh, I wanted to uh, also point out we got another rose in the sanctuary this morning. We've got a baby flower over here, and this is to honor the birth of Miller Price Adcock. Uh, this is Brian and Katie Adcock's first child, and so they're having some, going through some learning experiences right now. Uh, we want to continue to pray for them. Uh, Brian's getting over about with COVID, and that led into pneumonia, and so he's trying to get through that. And after they got home from the hospital, Katie had to go back to the hospital with blood pressure problems. Uh, so they're all at home now, and let's pray that they'll stay there and uh, everything will go well for Miller and for Brian and Katie. Uh, family members in our church are the uh, grandmother, Regina Adcock, and great-grandmother, who is smiling real big right now, uh, Peggy Summerall. And so we give congratulations to this family. And I've got one other thing to take care of this morning, and I'd like to invite Mr. Let me get his name right, Mr. Brooks Clark Garlets to join me up here on the platform. Uh, and if you would, uh, Brooks, bring your mom and daddy. One of the greatest uh, privileges that uh, we have as a church is to welcome newborn babies uh, into our church family. And uh, so uh, Leilani and Dwight have asked that today we dedicate uh, this baby to the Lord. And uh, this is a dedication not only of Brooks, but this is a dedication of you as the father and you as the mother. And so we're going to dedicate all of you to the Lord this morning. Uh, Dwight and Leilani, as parents, you've been blessed by the Lord with the gift of life, a priceless treasure to love and to nurture. We give thanks for your desire to dedicate Brooks to the Lord today, and we give thanks for his life and for the joy he brings to our church. I pray that you'll draw upon all the resources of faith, love, encouragement, and discipline to aid Brooks on his journey through life. Life is a gift from God that is meant to be lived in an attitude of praise and celebration. Husband, husbands and wives who love one another are privileged to share in the act of creation with God's blessing. Do you receive Brooks as a gift from God to love and to nurture? Do you pledge yourselves this day to strive to raise him up in an environment of Christian love and faith? Do you bring Brooks today to dedicate him to God and to commit to raise him up in the grace of our Lord and according to the teaching of his word? Do you here this day ask God's blessings upon his life to guide, guard, and direct him 
for all his years. Well, uh, as a church family, uh, we all have a responsibility for this child uh, and for uh, Dwight and for Leilani to pray for them and to encourage them and help them as needed and as we can uh, through the, the time that, that Brooks is growing up. And so I'd like to ask you this morning, if you would accept your role, your part in that responsibility, would you stand for a moment, please? And we'll pray together for Brooks. He was smiling a while ago. You gonna smile for me again? You gonna smile for me again? There he is. Gonna smile? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this precious gift that you've given Dwight and Leilani. And uh, Lord, we pray for his health, for his safety as he grows and matures. And we pray for your guidance in their lives as parents that they would understand the responsibility they'd have to bring him up in a way that uh, so one day he can come to know Jesus and follow him with his life. We thank you again for this precious life, Lord. Take care of uh, Brooks, take care of Dwight and Leilani. We dedicate him and this family to you today. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good job, man. All right, I got something for you here. I got, um, we have a certificate of dedication. And it reads, we, Dwight and Leilani Garlets, uh, commit ourselves to the Christian nurture of Brooks Clark, entering into this commitment at Crossroads Baptist Church as a part of congregational worship on August 22nd, 2021. And there's uh, also, I've signed it, and there's a sign it also. And then we have a Bible for him with his name on it. So congratulations. Yeah. Okay. Good. Let's uh, continue uh, in our time of worship now. Thank you. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, beginning in verse 1, says, who has believed what he has heard from us, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hid their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, and we have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. This morning, the praise team is going to share a new song with you. We just ask you just to remain seated as uh, we worship together.
God of the mountains and you're also the God of the valley. Let's think about it, church. A lot of times when we're the guys, when we're there on that mountain, we feel like, you know what? This is, me and the Lord have this connection right here. We're good. But the real times come in the times of the valley. When we face times where we're uncertain, we don't feel like the Lord's listening, we're really not quite sure what to do. And a lot of times we find ourselves praying in those situations, God, what do we do? Maybe it's prayers we're almost frustrated at times. Lord, where are you in the midst of this? But then we don't really give the Lord the opportunity to talk to us and walk us through it. In Habakkuk, you see in Habakkuk 1, you see the prophet Habakkuk had this conversation with the Lord. And it's really one of those, Lord, where are you? Why are we right here in the midst of this situation? Why are your people going through this? I think a lot of us have prayed that same type thing. But the response of Habakkuk in Habakkuk 2 is where I think we all need to get. We need to get to a place where we position ourselves to see what the Lord really wants to say to us. Here's what it tells us after Habakkuk 1, where he's crying out to the Lord, and the Lord had, they're having this conversation, and he's just pouring his heart out to the Lord. It says this in Habakkuk 2 1. It says, I will climb up to my watchtower and stand guard at my guard post. There I will wait to see what the Lord says and how he will answer me. Y'all, in those moments where we've cried out, we prayed our hearts out. That's when we climb up out of the midst of where we're at. The mess may still be around and we look for the Lord to come through. We anticipate. We have a posture where we believe the Lord can do what I just prayed. He said, I prayed that He would do. Habakkuk had prayed the Lord to rescue the people. Then he took a position where he waited on the Lord to do it. This morning we're going to spend a few minutes just to pray. And I'm going to ask you to be like Habakkuk. Hey, be looking for what the Lord's going to do. Stand guard. Anticipate the Lord coming through. Anticipate the Lord pulling through in whatever situation it is. We've got a room full of situations. We've got an online full of situations in families and personal lives. And the Lord can handle every bit of it. If we ask and then anticipate what He wants to do in your life. So let's pray this morning. We're going to continue to worship in a time of celebration. God, I love you. God, with so much going on right now, Lord, in personal lives and families, maybe in a church, in our land, been all over your world. God, at times we don't even know what to pray anymore. But God, we ask, and Lord, you answer. And God, in those moments when we ask, and we really don't even know hardly what to pray, Lord, will you intercede on our behalf, on behalf of other people? And then, God, may we take a position where we are anticipating you moving. Just like Habakkuk was, I'm going to stand here where I can see what the Lord wants to do. God, may we be ready to act. May we be ready to move when you say move. May it be our prayer and our response of obedience, God, for whatever you say to do. So, God, this morning in the midst of even our church, with different things going on, God, some people are on the mountain, some are in the middle of a valley right now. Lord, they're just struggling. God, in these moments, God, will you meet them there? Will you walk them hand in hand the direction you have for them? And God, for those in the valley, Lord, will you, will you teach them what you have for them in the midst of the valley? God, will you teach them your faithfulness in the middle of the valley? God, it's really to be easy to believe you're faithful when we're on that mountaintop, but God... In that valley, Lord, we need you to carry us out of that. So, God, for whatever valleys are in this room right now, God, may you lead and guide and direct us through them. God, it may not be time for us to be out of that valley yet because you may still be teaching us in the middle of it. But, God, will you lead us through that valley? And, God, as we continue to worship this morning, may you do a work in us. God, where we anticipate you. God, may you change our hearts this morning. May you allow us to throw off things that have got us distracted of what's going on this weekend and in the coming up week. And God, may we really have a time just to pour in and focus on you this morning. God, may it not be about who's beside us or in front or behind us, God, how good or bad we think we sing. God, we have a chance with the audience of one just to come before you in a time of worship this morning. And God, for whatever that looks like for your people, as that standing, sitting, that that's on their face at the altar before you, 
God, may we be obedient enough to respond to your promise. God, it's your name I pray.
God, I thank you that for all days, Lord, we get to proclaim the goodness of God and the grace and mercy of Jesus. And God, in those days where we really don't know what to do, God, may you just turn our hearts and our minds toward that, just to praise the name of the Lord our God. Because God, it's hard to feel down on ourselves when we realize what you did for us. And God, the grace and mercy and the sacrifice you took for us. So God, days when we don't think we can go on, God, may you prompt us just to spend time in worship. And to spend time with you, Lord, just in the midst of wherever we're at, in the car, in the house, the wherever, God, may you turn our hearts towards you in those times. God, will you speak to us this morning? God, it's your name we pray. Amen. Um, I got a question. I know kind of a little bit of the answer to this with our kids and our youth. Let's just say hypothetically you're, you have a trip in two weeks. Who's starting to pack two weeks ahead of time? We got a couple. Uh, early. I knew Morgan was going to raise her. She's normally the one on the trip. She's packed a week before we leave. How many of y'all, about a week ahead of time, you're getting stuff together, you're getting every, all your moms are like, I have to then or it won't get done. How many of y'all last minute throw it in the suitcase and go? <laughs> there we go. And a lot of times we get in the middle of it, we're like, you know what, I'm pretty sure I missed something there. Um, now, I want to go ahead and let you know, if you're the calendar keeper of your home, go ahead and get it out. September 12th through the 15th, there's something going on here at the church. Now, the response of us dictates what it is. We're referring to it as revival, but let's just be honest. We can all have a meeting and revival not take place. So if you're the one that helps schedule your family and make sure everybody's got their life together, be sure you put it down on paper in your phone or whatever. Because I'm going to encourage you to be there. And it's not just so we can all get together and have a good time. Hopefully will that happen at a time of fellowship? Sure. But we're going to look this morning at revival. We're actually, because that Sunday is three weeks from today. Today and the next two weeks, we're going to dive into getting ready to see what revival truly looks like. That way we're not the last minute packers. You show up on Sunday morning at the 12th and be like, huh, there's a special service going on. Because I'll tell you this, church, if you dive in in the next three weeks, you prepare yourself, revival will happen. It'll happen. We're going to look at that today and the next two weeks as to how do we prepare ourselves individually and as a church to allow revival to happen personally and corporately with us. So before we kind of look at what is revival, I think we may need to look at what it's not necessarily. See, revival is not just a whole bunch of services, maybe an evangelistic outreach, maybe just of getting some good singers and preachers together. We can do every bit of that. And like I said, revival will not happen. We can draw the crowds and revival doesn't happen. A circus draws a crowd. Revival is that outpouring of the Holy Spirit on His people. Where He shows up, He changes things. And it's where we, as the body of Christ, just sit back and let Him pour into us. And that's the desire of our heart. Because about a month and a half, two months ago... We're sitting here thinking, uh, just with all this going on, do we have revival, do we not? Do we have revival, do we not? And it kind of came, why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we, church? And we get the opportunity as a church to make the decision. Brother John said earlier, it's a choice. We get to make the choice. Am I going to be here on a Sunday morning to meet with Jesus? Am I going to decide church is more important than Sunday night football to come back Sunday night? Is it more important than making my click list at 6 o'clock on Monday and I'm going to show up for church to see what Jesus has to say to me? Is it more important than whatever reality TV show we have on Tuesdays? Yes. That's your answer. Yes, it's more. But we have to make that conscious decision. Is this what I need to be about? That fresh outpouring of God's grace, His mercy, and His life-giving spirit on His people. See, here's some of the things that happen when revival happens. The spiritually dead come to life. We see that in Romans 10, 9 and 10. He gives us a picture of that. Here's what he says. 
If you openly or if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. See, that gets to happen at Revival when you have a face-to-face meeting with Jesus. And I'll tell you, when you spend the next three weeks saying, Lord, I want to prepare me for Revival. I want to prepare myself. We're going to see that happen. I believe that in faith. If we will spend the next three weeks preparing ourselves, our church, and what God's called us to to go and reach and invite, we're going to see that happen. I truly believe it. And believe in that in faith. That salvation can happen. Because he tells us there in Romans 10, Hey, if you believe in your heart that you're made right with your God, but then you confess it with your mouth that you're saved. And that doesn't have to wait till revival happens in three weeks. We get a chance to confess that daily. That's just a proclamation of what we believe. A lot of us believe a lot of stuff about a lot of different things, and we are happy to tell people what we believe. But some reason, when it comes to our faith in Jesus Christ, we're like, I don't want to offend anybody. Us scared to offend them is sending people to hell. Let's just be real. Us scared to start a conversation with a family member could be their eternity at stake. With your neighbor across the street that you only wave to when we take out the trash. That's what's at stake. It's eternity at stake, people. So it's when those spiritually dead come to life. For some of those who are barely even hanging on, get revived. It may be like it talks about there in Luke 15, 24. When it says, this son of mine was dead and now has returned to life. He is lost, but he's found. And it said, let the party begin. Some of you, maybe people you know, they know Jesus, but truly they need some spiritual CPR. They are struggling. They're all but dead in their faith. And they need the Lord to come and boost them. They need to hear what He can do. They need Him to breathe life into them. Because spiritually, they're in trouble. See, those things can happen at revivals. We can see spiritual growth happen at revivals. Hebrews 5, 11 through 14 tells us this. It says there's so much more that we can say about this, but it's difficult to explain. Especially since you're spiritually dull and don't seem to listen. You've been believers so long now, you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things of God's Word. You're like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant, does not know what to do. Know how to do what is right. Solid food is for those who are mature, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. See, there was a time when you were a baby, a little toddler, that you needed baby food. Why are we still having to spoon feed the people of God who have been believers for years and years and years? Why is it, church, that when we have a need, maybe to help teach a class in a, in a time of need, that we look around at each other like, well, I can't teach. I don't know anything. We've been believers for years and years and years, and we're still having to be spoon-fed on Sundays and Wednesdays. Revival can kickstart that and get us all spiritual baby food and start giving you meat. And then you desire it. We started giving Marla real food instead of that weird stuff, whatever it is. You know what? She doesn't want the other anymore. She wants real stuff. She wants things that truly nurture her. Church, we need to move beyond that. Infant mentality as a believer that we come to get spoon-fed on Sundays and Wednesdays. And we need to dive into this on our own. Say, Lord, I need you to fill me up. Because I'm spiritually hungry. Revival can... Make you hungry and it can fill you. Revival has a pers- purpose of restoring us and bringing back our spiritual walk. It'll help us replace the flesh for the things and the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5.19 says this, When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry. Sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like this. And see, you may be thinking, but I'm a believer. I'll do those things. But y'all, when we don't follow Christ and we're saturated with the world, those things seep in. 
Well, we're not continually filling ourselves with the Spirit of God, the Word of God. That other stuff starts to take influence on us, whether we like it or not. It kind of ends up where we're at. And it says, let me tell you again, as I have before, anyone living that sort of life will inherit the kingdom of God. But then it says this in verse 22. It says, but the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that fell in some of these great revivals, produces these things in our life. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. That's the things that we can help work our way through during revival. It brings to light the fact, you know what, maybe I'm not living the way I should. I'm not a really bad person doing all these bad things, but I'm not allowing the fruits of the Spirit to play out in my everyday walk. It can illuminate, illuminate those things. Personal revival brings about church revival. We can't have a church-wide revival unless we have individual revival. Y'all, it's got to happen in your circle where you're at. It's got to happen right in the middle of where you're at. And when the Lord causes revival in this one and this one and this one, we start to see revival in all of it. Will you do your part? Will you be ready for what the Lord has for us? It may be that shot in the arm that you need to deepen your walk with the Lord. Maybe some spiritual disciplines that you need to look at. Of prayer, tithing, fasting, reading of the word, fellowship with other believers. Revival can kickstart those things. So that's what it can do. But do you need it? Do you need it? A long time ago, there's a comedian. It's been several years now. Um, and he got famous, these little one-liners. And he would finish his joke by, then you might be a redneck. One's like, uh, if you think a subdivision is an advanced math class, you might be a redneck. See, he, he came up with these things, and here's what he said. And I watched a little short video of how he started. He said, I realize there's a little redneck in all of us. Even the ones that don't think they're a redneck, there's a little redneck in all of them. So all these, somehow, somewhere, it's probably going to apply. So for any of us in this room, it's like, you know what, I don't need revival, I'm good. There's a chance that you do. We're going to look at a few things this morning of do we truly need revival? This one, this right here says, is there a dullness and apathetic attitude towards the things of the Lord? Have you just kind of become, eh, if I go to church, fine. If I don't, fine. If I read my Bible, great. If I don't, it's no big deal. Have you become that way about the Lord and the things of the Lord? Um, in Matthew 13, 14, and 15, it says this. Not like the whole chapter, like three chapters. Matthew 13, verses 14 and 15. I just read how that sounded. We're going to be here a while. It says, this fulfills the prophecy, the prophecy of Isaiah that says, When you hear what I say, you will not understand. When you see what I do, you will not comprehend. For the hearts of these people are hardened, and their ears cannot hear, and they have closed their eyes. So their eyes cannot see, their ears cannot hear, their hearts cannot understand, and they cannot turn to me and let me heal them. See, they had hardened their heart. They had kind of shut out the things of the Lord. Is there a chance you're like that little kid playing t-ball in right field? They're on the team. They have a uniform. They're on the field. They don't have a clue what they're doing. They could care less. Some of you are saved. You have a relationship with Jesus. You're in the church, but you can care less about the things of the church right now. Some of you are very much like that little kid in right field. And I have a venture guess. A lot of those little kids in right field may have parents that probably played right field too. Parents, when you're totally apathetic about the things of the Lord and you really don't care, you're going to produce kids that are probably the same way. You watch that dad on the sideline of the dugout that says, go get it. You're prepared a week before the game. You make sure their cleats and their gloves are together. They practice, they practice, they practice. You're going to watch that kid on the field be excited about the game. Parents, show your kid excitement about church. Show your kid excitement about the things of the Lord. Show your kids you're prepared to get ready for church. And you're preparing to come worship. Or we have the kid in right field. I played right field some, so I'm not hating on right fielders. Maybe you're trapped in some sin holding you back from growing. Maybe you don't even know you're really trapped. 
John 10.10 10 says this, thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. My purpose is to give them rich and satisfying life. Some of you, the, t the thief is taking ground and you don't even know he is. He's come that you may have life and have it to the fullest and have it abundantly. You may be somebody that you know he is stealing your joy. He's killing your joy. He's destroying your family. He's destroying where you're at. And your spiritual walk is truly struggling. I would venture to say you need revival to happen. You might need to be at a revival. Or you just plan on need revival. You don't need three weeks to go by before it happens. You need it to happen today. You need the Lord to do a work in you. Do you just plan on need to be encouraged by being with the Lord and being around His people? Hebrews 10.25 tells us this. It says, Don't neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially that the day of His return is drawing near. See, we need each other. You need chances to minister to one another, and if we are not together, it's harder to minister to one another. It reminds me of a story I read about a young lady who was pregnant and she had a little toddler trying to fly along. And at this point, the little toddler decided to have one of their little temper tantrums in the middle of the airport. There's really nothing this mom could do. She just sat down beside him, toddler, and just let her work it out. And the story goes that several other moms rallied around her. This one pulled out a toy. This one started jingling keys. And together they calmed the baby. They calmed the mom. The mom got on the flight and they continued on their way. Y'all, there are people around us right now that need people to rally around. That you may not see the visual temper tantrum and exhaustion that's going on, but y'all, it's there. They need the body of Christ to rally around them just to love on them. And this gives us an opportunity to do that. Some of you need revival because you're having trouble hearing from the Lord. We played a game Wednesday night. Um, and what we did, we had a kid put on some pretty good noise-canceling headphones. And then we turned the music up really, really loud at them. So much that they're like... Okay, this is loud. If a kid tells you the music's loud, it's probably loud. But then we had their partner giving them phrases. Like, what were some of those weird phrases? Like, purple parrot people eaters or something. And so we have a kid speaking this. And the other one, while they've got music and stuff going, trying to read their lips, trying to figure out what they say. And y'all, it was pretty comical at times, uh, what they said. And y'all, it's not that the person wasn't speaking is that the one doing the listening had other stuff going in their ears. They were listening to other voices. They had headphones on canceling that out. Some of you are struggling because you're not hearing from the Lord at all. Could it be because we blocked our listening devices with other things? Could it be that we're listening to ourselves? We're listening to the evil one and things he's putting in us. Some of us desperately need to hear from the Lord. And some of them, you might just be a person who really loves Jesus and is following Jesus, and you just want more of Jesus. That's why you need to come. See, we're all there. In some shape, form, or fashion, it's called for us all. We all need some form of revival. So how do we prepare for it? See, we've got about three weeks till this happens. And they say about three weeks or so, you can begin to form a habit, and it becomes to be a part of your routine. I'm going to give you some things this morning, and... I'm hoping, and we're going to leave them on the screen a little bit. If you're one of these people who likes to write stuff down, hey, here's some ways I can kind of prepare myself and moms and dads, maybe help prepare your family for a time of revival with the people here at Crossroads. And one thing we've got to do, we've got to be positioned to be ready. It's kind of like those kids on the field. If you've ever played sports, most of you didn't stand there like this. No, if you play ball, if you're playing infield or outfield, you're kind of ready. You're ready for whatever's going to happen. You're not flat-footed. You're on the balls of your feet. If it goes this way, it goes that way. Wherever you can move. Some of us are really, really missing the Lord. And He's biased before we realize what happens to our faith is very flat-footed. We're standing here like this. Expecting the ball to be hit right to us. Y'all, the Lord wants to use you and maybe reveal Himself in many different ways. We've got to quit having this flat-footed faith. We've got to be ready to move. We've got to position ourselves... To be ready for revival and just to hear the Lord. So here's some ways 
that we can do this. One, we've got to make church a priority. I'm going to challenge you the next three weeks. Make it a priority in your life of your family. That it is important to be in the house of God and around His people. Be here if at all possible. Don't let other things take precedent. Some of you are trying to live your Christian life on an island by yourself. We need the support of other people. Another way, this next couple weeks, I want you to find a way to serve other people. Like, who am I supposed to serve? Matthew 25, 40 says this. The king will say, I tell you the truth. When did you do it to the least of these, my brothers, you were doing unto me? And he was talking about this. He said, I was thirsty. He said, for I was thirsty, you didn't feed me. You didn't feed me. I was thirsty, you didn't give me a drink. I was estranged, you didn't invite me in. I was naked, you didn't give me clothes. I was sick and in prison, you didn't visit me. Then they were proud. Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or estranged or naked, sick or in prison and not help you? He tells us this. In Matthew 20, 45, he said, I will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refuse to help the least of these brothers and sisters, you refuse to help me. Find a way this week, y'all, to serve other people. Find a way to help somebody else and do it because, hey, this is what the Lord has called me to do. You want to see that habit start to form? Start doing that. Look for opportunities to serve others. Another way we prepare ourselves for revival is we become very diligent in our prayer life. We've got to set aside time to pray. And not just those 911 prayers, y'all. To truly approach the Lord, cry out to Him, and have time to listen. Here's what it says in Matthew 26, 41. It says, keep watch and pray, so you will not give in to temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. I challenge you, carve out some time. Think about your day-to-day -day routine. Is it getting up a little earlier? Is it not watching the ESPN highlights for the 14th time that day? Is it turning off your reality show that time? Spend some time diligently in prayer individually, and I challenge you to do it as a family. Mom, Dad, get your kids around. Let's spend some time praying. Lord, what do you want to do in our family, Lord? Show yourself to us. Start making that a habit in your private life. Another thing we can do is to surround ourselves with like-minded believers who are going to hold us accountable, serve with us, and pray. We need to be around other brothers and sisters in Christ. It encourages us. It makes us feel like, you know what, I'm not the only one going through these struggles right now. I'm not the only one struggling to live out my faith in front of my coworkers or in front of my other students in my class. See, when we surround ourselves with other people, it encourages us. That's one reason I love, like, if one of our Wednesday night crew had to do everything by themselves, they would be really discouraged. One of them really kind of like, oh my goodness, i got to go through this again. But if you've never seen fellowship happen, hang out in the kitchen on a Wednesday night. You have believers serving together, fellowshipping together, and just loving being with each other. Y'all, there's encouragement in that. Find a place to be around other believers. The fifth way we can help prepare ourselves is to get to the Word of God. Allow it to convict. Allow it to encourage. Allow it to truly be that lamp into our feet and line to our path. Lord, I want to sit here with you this morning until you give me something. Lord, I want to sit here this morning until you show yourself to me in the Scriptures. Show me where maybe I'm doing wrong. Show me some things I'm doing right. Show me how to pray, Lord. Now I encourage you to spend time in the Word. I've told this to the students. We talked about this. Devotions are great, y'all. But that's the Word that somebody else got from the Lord. He has a Word for you. Keep doing your devotion. That's fine. Keep listening to your podcast. But y'all, we can't just say the heck with this because we're going to listen to what the Lord gave somebody else. I challenge you. Get in it. Find what He has for you in the middle of it. Another way we can prepare ourselves for revival is through fasting. It's something we don't talk about much. We don't do it much. But it's that deliberate biblical fasting is holding away food for a certain amount of time. Maybe it's a day. Maybe it's two days. Maybe it's a week. Maybe it's a 40 day. 
It's say, you know what? I'm going to just trust that the supernatural is going to fill me and give me strength as opposed to the natural right now. I'm going to choose to set aside the time I would normally fill myself physically to fill myself spiritually. It's a time where you're like, you know what? Lord, I can't do this on my own, so you're going to have to nourish me. Now, we see it at times, people are like, I'm going to fast from Facebook. I'm going to fast from TV. Those are fine and dandy, but true biblical fasting is, hey, Lord, you've got to fill me and sustain me. And in two weeks, two weeks from today, y'all, it's going to be Labor Day Sunday. I'm going to preach a message about fasting, and I'm going to call our church to fast. I'm going to, maybe for you, the Lord says, hey, I'm going to do a one day. Some of you may do three days. Some of you may do the entire time of our revival. But you look at moves from the Lord, it says the people prayed and they fasted. They prayed and they fasted. We're in the middle of a time right now, we need a move from the Lord in our nation, in our church, in you individually. And why are we negating what the scriptures say? That's when the Lord shows up. We're going to explain fasting. I'm going to tell you some techniques of it. I'm going to give you some things. And we're going to look at how it can change you. It's some things that I've done in the past. It's things that our family's done in the past. Some of you may have. And we say, Lord, it's not about me filling myself with everything that the world says. You've got to get this. You've got to get that. Lord, I need you desperately in these moments to fill me up. Another way we can do this is by preparing for revival. We, is examining ourselves. So we've got to grow in our faith and our pursuit of holiness with the Lord. We have to denounce the sinful things that we've done. We've got to put aside the sinful. We need to do what it tells us there in Psalm. Hey, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Hey, reveal the things that don't look like you. We need to cleanse ourselves and spend time in repentance and before the Lord and say, Lord, I want you to get rid of anything in my life that doesn't look like you. So you can come and you can fill me in these days. The last way I'm going to talk about of ways that we can prepare for revival, and there's more, is to make worship a priority. Make worship a priority. Not just here on Sunday mornings. I know some of you like your radio stations, hunting, fishing, and loving every day. I'm going to challenge you for the next three weeks in your car, put on something that glorifies the Lord. Your Spotify in your home, put on something that glorifies the Lord. Immerse yourself in it. Let that be the words that are filling you. Let that be the thoughts that are filling you in your private worship time. Because I'll guarantee you, if your private worship time is what it's supposed to be, our public worship time will blow the doors off this place. Because our public worship is a reflection of our private worship. Spend time in worship with Him. Whatever your style of music, worship music is. I'm not telling you you've got to do what the band does or, what, or whoever. Whatever takes you to a place where you're closer to the Lord, I challenge you the next three weeks to take it there. If you're the business owner, make that what plays in your place of business. Make it what plays in your home. Because you look at this. I think about Paul and Silas. They were in the jail. They had been beaten and stripped down, thrown in the jail with shackles. And it says at the midnight hour, they began to worship. And breakthrough happened. The Lord showed up in the midst of their worship. Find your time with the Lord. Put on your headphones, just you and Jesus. Go for a walk. Go get on the tractor. Go get on the lawnmower. Go get wherever with you. Where nobody else has to hear your voice, good or bad. And just spend time with you. There's few things I enjoy more than me getting on that lawnmower and just singing, singing, singing. Or on that tractor and just getting after. It's just me and Jesus in the middle of the woods sometimes. A chance just to cry out and worship. And he meets you there. So in closing, church, do we need revival? Absolutely. Do you need revival? Do I need it? Yeah. We all do. Y'all, this isn't necessarily a push. For five services we're going to have in a few weeks. This is the push where the people of God go closer to Jesus. In our personal life. 
And the reality is revival can happen anywhere, at any time, when the people of God get a hold of God. And God gets a hold of them. Let's pray. God, I thank you that we have the opportunity, even in the coming weeks, to spend very intense times with you. God, I pray right now, even for that time of revival, God, for the, the people leading music, God, may you start a work in them today. Maybe there's some different things they need to do in the realm of the worship at whatever hour they're going to be here. God, for the people we have preaching this revival, God, may you begin now to do a work in them. God, if they've already had messages planned and you need to change that, God, may we be in tune enough with you and in tune enough with the Spirit to say, you know what, we need to go a different direction. God, for our people right now, God, may we, each one of us, see the need of individual revival. And then, God, individual revival creates a revival in our body, in our church body. And, God, from people in this sanctuary who may not have a personal relationship with you and are truly lost, God, they need revival. God, for those who have an intimate walk with you, they're walking and running with Jesus. God, they need it as well. So, God, each of us do. God, may you meet us in these places. God, may you... Prepare us over the next week as we look at what it looks like to pray, what it looks like to fast, what it looks like to anticipate a move of the Lord. God, will you prepare your people here at Cross Church for what you have? And God, just like a back, oh, I want to stand on the watchtower. I want to anticipate what you're going to do. Because God, you're, you're going to show up. When you show up, you show up in power. Because, Lord, you can show up no other way but in power. So, God, I ask that you prepare our body these next three weeks. Through times in the Word, through times in worship, through times of prayer, through times of encouraging other believers, through times of serving, through times just being a part of the body of Christ here at Crossroads. God, may you prepare us for the work you have for us. God, in your name we pray. In the next moments, we have a time of response, a time of invitation, a time to be obedient to whatever the Lord's called you to. Maybe you know a way that He's dealing with you. Maybe it's a church membership thing. This is where you want to plug in. Maybe it's a salvation thing. You know you don't have a relationship with Jesus. Maybe you're one of those people I've talked about. You're barely hanging on spiritually. You just really need to come and allow the Lord to fill you up. This is a time where you can do that where you're at. Brother John and I will be here. This altar is open. Whatever you need. You come. If you just want to come spend some time here praying, you do that as well. Let's stand as we say.
for reminding us uh, what we need to do. You know, we can put it on the calendar, as Kevin pointed out, but a rival doesn't take place unless we are seeking it, unless we're preparing for it. And so uh, we, we've got it on the calendar. That's all set. So let's get ready so we can have revival. And we don't have to wait for those dates on the calendar for it to break out. It, it can happen at any moment when we're seeking it, when we're preparing for it. Thank you again for being with us today and for joining in our time of worship. Uh, and we are grateful for the way the Lord has spoken to us individually and as a church through this time of worship. I need to let you know that uh, we next Sunday, uh, we're going to have at the end of the worship service uh, just a call business celebration. We're going to vote on some Sunday school teachers and some church leaders. Uh, that information will be available to you when you come in. And uh, we'll just need you to approve and realize we didn't get this done uh, a couple of weeks ago when we had our business celebration. And so we need to have that uh, done as we move into the new church year. So that won't take just a few moments, but I have to give you a, a week's notice. And so next Sunday, right after the service, I'm going to ask you to say amen, and let's vote on these uh, leaders that we need to elect. Uh, another thing we're going to do as we close this morning, I want to remind you uh, to pray for the situation in Afghanistan. Uh, we don't know everything that's going on over there, uh, but we know it's serious. It's uh, very serious. Uh, there are Americans who are still there that uh, are finding it difficult to get uh, our way. And um, someone mentioned Wednesday night that Afghanistan has the second fastest growing Christian community of any nation in the world, behind only Iran. Uh, the, the church is growing faster in Iran than any other nation in the world, and Afghanistan is second. And so there are a lot of believers Afghani believers in Afghanistan uh, who, are, who are facing the prospects of losing their lives because of the faith they've placed in Christ. And so we're going to uh, end with a, uh, a closing and our closing prayer. Uh, we'll be, I'll ask you to join me as I pray for Afghanistan, uh, for not only our folks that are over there, but for our, our fellow believers who are there and uh, that God will, on his throne, uh, minister to them, encourage their hearts. Uh, the testimonies coming out of Afghanistan from Afghani believers are, I'm ready. I I'm ready for whatever happens. And so, uh, kind of like the song that uh, the praise team sang to begin the service. Uh, there's no scars in heaven except the ones that are holding you. So, you think? This afternoon, 5 o'clock, our preview and some Christmas music. We need singers. Come join us as we preview Christmas music. Thank you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this time of worship, a time that we could gather together as your people in this place to join our hearts together, uh, to hear from you, to lift up our praises to you. And Lord, as we uh, close our service today. We remember our brothers and sisters in Christ who are in difficult situation right now, those in Afghanistan, for our fellow, fellow United States citizens, for our military, and for uh, our fellow believers uh, who are in that country. And Lord, we know that you are still God on your throne, and there are many things that we have trouble understanding or getting our, our minds around why things happen or why they happen the way they do. Lord, help us to trust you above all else. And in your infinite wisdom and power, uh, have mercy on those who have placed their faith and trust in you. Uh, we pray for your protection. Uh, we pray for your deliverance. We pray for your salvation to be manifest in their lives. Let your grace be sufficient for this hour. Be with us as we go out from this place. Bring us back at that next appointed time. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.